Alrighty. So, I kind of just want to talk about Augie Voker a little bit. Um, as for my TLDR thoughts, so I'll just put it straightforward, is I think the class is interesting. Um, I do like it a lot. I think it's a good idea. Uh, but it still isn't balanced correctly. And it needs some adjustments to make it more... As well as mainly talking like a Mythic Plus uh, situation. Um, essentially just make it more balanced with everything else. But the, the balance that it brings is weird. And that's kind of what I want to get into. Um, Augie Voker is made for people who want to be support, right? They don't want to be the healer. They don't want to be the tank. They might not be the one doing the damage. They want to be support. They want to do jobs. They want to buff you. They want to be like, all right, I'll make sure everyone's got a little more coverage here. We'll do this. We'll do that. You're not like really intensively, oh, got to be in uptime, everything, blah, which you can and people who want to optimize do, but it is a class built for a supported, a support mindset, right? It just, it just is. That's what it's for. It helped that kind of player was not really catered to or didn't have anything to play. So now that they have something like that, I think it's cool. It allows that kind of player to do that kind of thing. Um, and it is probably not meant to be something like crazy difficult, but let's talk about Augie Voker in Raid. Augie Voker in Raid is surprisingly probably one of the most difficult classes in the game to optimize. Um, I, I know me, people probably meme on Augie Voker being realistically uh, this kind of like, aha, you hit your buttons, other people do damage, you just kind of exist kind of thing. But it's really, really not um, if you actually try and optimize the class. Because every class has a lot of different damage windows. Some do 130, some are a minute, some are two, some are three. Maybe some have really big cooldowns at like a six minute, you know? Which they can maybe reduce depending like previously on Holy DK. Like, but they reduce, I don't know exactly what their t their windows are. But to really play Augie Voker at a very, very high level in a raid scenario requires you to almost know everything about all the other classes. Or you're just really good at looking at logs because you can look at logs, you can look at a fight, and you can say, okay, here's the damage profiles at here, here, and here. At the 1 minute 57 mark, I have this available. Who's doing the most damage in this next 20 second window that I can buff them or provide the most value to the raid? And they go, okay, it's going to be this guy. We'll put him here. We'll give him this. We'll give him impressions. We'll do this. At, when that's over, at the, what, 2.30 mark, someone, someone's got their other stuff rolling up. Maybe I can try and set up on the Warlock here. They're doing this. They're setting up all of their shit. Maybe I can give the presents, give them the bonus crit for their dots and their spreading. Like, I don't know exactly how all of that would work, but the difficulty in that and the knowledge required to play Augie Voker at that level is very, very hard. It is a very, very hard thing to do, and I'm really looking forward to how people use this thing um, because it is very cool. It is very difficult. It is very cool. The best thing I think about the class is you can just literally pay phone it. You can not pay attention, you can do your stuff, you can throw the buff on the random DPS, like doing Mythic Plus, and just be chilling, right? You're just chilling. Um, all You can still, in Mythic Plus, obviously try and optimize that. Um, but even in Raid, you can just let Jesus take the wheel on how your shit's being buffed, and probably still do decently well, uh, albeit not optimized, right? So I think... Design-wise, in Raid, the class is actually looking very well. They've uh, removed a lot of the degenerate shit with uh, big pre-pulls and having everybody spread out and trying to buff a specific person and put four buffs on the same guy. Then their buffs are augmenting their own buffs, and they're using that to buff the next guy to buff the next... Like, they've gotten rid of that garbage because uh, that shit was way too degenerate. Way too degenerate. It was degenerate to the point that it was probably going to be incredibly problematic um, for the race to world first. It's not really worth doing pull optimization like that in a prog setting. But regardless, obviously people will try and play and do the best thing. That kind of top level meta always trickles down. 
in the information age of MMOs like this. It always does and always will. So because of that, that sort of degeneracy would really run through and probably negatively affect a lot of the player base uh, more so than what it should be. So thankfully, they fixed that, which is really, really good. And I think Augie Boker in Raid is something very interesting um, and for a very particular player, which is cool to have. Now, talking about Augie Voker and Mythic Plus, right? Because this thing in Mythic Plus is a monster. And it isn't a monster because it does damage. It is a monster because it allows you to just live. Now, this can be a discussion about how Mythic Plus damage scales as a whole versus what Augie Voker allows you to do. Because Augie Voker in certain keys, it will allow you to do key levels three or four, two to three, maybe even four times higher than if you played all the same players, all the same classes. The Augie Voker is playing something that's not Aug, right? You go into a key that's three levels below, and then even using defensives, you hit something, you just die straight up. What Aug really can provide for the group is just that layer of defense that allows them to just live. They have the damage, right? Excuse me. These players are making these huge pulls. They have the damage. They're doing all of this damage. Augie Boker is really allowing uh, these classes to just survive these mechanics. And what it also kind of leads into, which is somewhat degenerate, is the reason why Fire Mage and Shadow Priest were alongside Augie Boker is because, okay, well, we needed the Shadow Priest because Mind Soothe and P.I. are really, really good. Master Spell is also insane, depending on what dungeon you're doing, right? Basically required. So, this class has P.I. Who do we give it to? Okay, we give it to one of the best P.I. classes in the game, Fire Mage. So, that literally, Augie Voker existing, and then Priest being required, made... Fire, fire mage there that's how that happens um but on top of that because these classes scale well together and then augmentation buffing them on top of that it allowed that whole god comp thing to really reign supreme and so essentially ruin mythic plus for quite a while um i do think it's a good idea that they did this in a 0.5 season when it, the race and everything was already over uh, but it certainly ne negatively impacted a lot of people, myself included, because um, I don't I don't play Augie Voker. I don't enjoy it. So there is a definitely a discussion to be had about I think Mythic Plus scaling versus uh, the defensive capability of a support class, uh, mainly because. The support class becomes required due to the infinite scaling because at a certain point you just can't survive without it um taking a look at a couple things specifically right you look at black attunement you you and your four nearest allies have four percent max health and a raid whatever you can use that to a certain capability right but a mythic plus it's always up obsidian scales increase maximum health to ten percent you're giving everybody 10%. You can use it on top of Zephyr, right? Reducing damage from area of effect by 20% on top of giving people 10% health. You have multiple variations of DR, and that DR can be applied with other classes, and depending on if you have rallies or aura masteries, different defensive layers really stack up, and having just extra health on top of that is really, really strong. Uh, also to note... It's not raid-wide like Rally is, but with the nerf coming to Rally, Black Attunement is just Rally, but the Augivos, it's just Rally at half the cooldown, and the Augivoker gets a 30% DR at the same time, because they, it pops when Obsidian Scales pops. Rally is 3 minutes, so the Evoker gets 30% DR, the entire rest of the group gets rally levels of health for 12 seconds, which is also longer than rally. And it also, as, like I said, has half the time and an additional charge. Like this by itself, 
Obsidian Scales additional charge black attunement is insane. Like disgustingly insane in Mythic Plus. Uh, and that's not even including the other things they bring. They bring Cauterizing Flames. They have a Dispel, a Bleed Removal, which is super important. It also heals. So compared to other Dispels, right? I mean, I guess it's a one-minute cooldown, but other Dispels just Dispel you. They don't also heal you. So Cauterizing Flames is really, really strong. So this, as a support class, has Rally on a minute and a half cooldown, has a complete cleanse, Bleed Removal, and Heal on top of that, they provide your tanks to be way stronger because they allow them to take more damage by just giving them bonus armor. Um, they have an AoE Soothe. I don't remember where the Soothe Roar is. It's not upheaval. Not time skip. Uh, they have an AoE Soothe, which they can take. They also have Zephyr, which is really strong. Um, they just have a really, really, really insane amount of utility. Uh, and specifically, they have an insane amount of defensive utility and group-wide utility for a class that does as much damage, when you look at logs, or even more damage, as a normal DPS. Uh, so this thing is, by design, currently outclassing every other character in the entire game it buffs everybody it is insane it will be the hardest staple there is and will continue to be the staple in mythic plus until they really do something about it um and there's a couple ways they can do something about this class right they can nerf its damage potential and how it buffs people which i don't think is uh that great um also one other thing to note is that when it uses its two minute cooldown breath of aeons it also when allies deal damage with temporal runes they gain a shield for 100 percent of the damage dealt so they're also gaining an additional shield on top of that on top of everything else on top of scales on top, it's this class is fucking insane um so, realistically, how are they going to nerf it, right? What, what are they supposed to do? Um, are they going to nerf its damage to the point where it's just defensive utility? I don't think that's the right way to go. Uh, I really think that their defensive utility either needs to be looked at and nerfed significantly, or the defensive utility of everybody else really needs to come up with it. Um, with it to a level that it's worth bringing, right? Like the example I gave you, Rally. Double the cooldown, less duration. It's just worse. It's worse in every conceivable way. So they really need to look at what other classes bring, what they have. Um, one thing, I think it was, was it Megaset? Megan said, I think it, I think it was Megaset. I, I don't know the exact way to pronounce it because I only heard listen to the podcast once um, through the Titan Forge podcast with with Dratnos and Trell and Tettles talking about augmentation a little bit. She said something that really resonated with me, which was why did augmentation evoker get everything a healer wanted? So it's doing as much damage as a DPS and has all the utility of a healer. Like these utilities, these health buffs, these tank buffs, these um, shields, these AoE damage redu reduction, right? These things really should be brought to healers. Um, this kind of utility should be brought to other things. Like what if Iron Bark could be put on all of your teammates, right? That's really good, really strong. Like what if, I don't know, a aoe life cocoon sounds kind of like lame but like what if you could do like a like something like that i don't know like just the fact that healers didn't receive any of the utilities that this class has and it makes this class mandatory because everything else is just worse by comparison uh, this might be something that has changed and helped over time as they've been doing a pretty good job at the class reworks and been pretty extensive with that um, but I do really think that they need to 
I don't know if they should take uh, this utility away from Augie Voker, but the problem once again remains if they don't take or adjust the strength of their utility specifically, like their defensive utility, then even though, even if you give healers utility like that, realistically, then you'll just bring both and have double the utility. So the issue at that point becomes then, well, do they just nerf Aug's damage to the point where it's not viable to bring it DPS-wise and tie keys and make it something that's decent for a support-style player to play? It's a very, very tricky, tricky subject, and it's very difficult to really pinpoint what should be adjusted because we don't want this thing to be nerfed into the ground completely useless, right? That'd be bad. But at the same time, it's completely dominant in the mythic plus setting and it's pretty good in raid and it has a lot of potential in raid but the difficulty that that potential brings in the raid scenario is actually something that i think is worth having there um which is why realistically i think in terms of a mythic plus setting that they're really going to have to to extensively look at how things are used and affected in Mythic Plus. For example, Darkness is a 15% chance avoidance in Raid, but it's 30% chance in Mythic Plus. Um, the buff Augie Bokers give is also increased in Mythic Plus compared to Raid, right? They're able to, in these five-man group settings, buff and change and adjust abilities on a individual level within that five-man content and if they're really really paying it if they're really looking at it and they're smart people they've probably already considered this i don't know if it's something that's viable for them to do but if they really want mythic plus to kind of flourish as the secondary thing you really do in the game because it's continuous content that you can do all the time they're really going to have to look at almost a full balance overhaul of every class specifically for mythic plus using that um style of um raid is one way mythic plus is another now that's going to take a lot of resources to do that that'll probably take a lot of time it's not you could easily go oh well they just make instead of capped at five and raid it's capped at 10 and mythic plus for whirlwind for warrior it's fixed plus double Yay, but that's, I don't think you can fix it that easily, or I, or I don't really know how easy that is to implement and what bugs that might be involved with that. I'm not a game dev, I don't know that shit, right? So, augmentation, while really cool, I think has overall provided a interesting problem uh, in the game as a whole, for a variety of reasons. Um, I'm glad it's here. But I'm not glad at how it affects other people, me included, in the Mythic Plus setting. And essentially, if you have an Augie Boker versus not having an Augie Boker, it completely changes uh, how you're able to play the game. Like with an Augie Boker, you can just ignore shit. They do the defensives. They have all of that utility. Um... So it's quite possible the defensive utility of this class might just need to get gutted and then that defensive utility shifts over to healers um, comparatively to make it a little more of a balanced state. But like I said, even then, even if they have some of it left and the healers get a lot of it, then you just have both, right? So the entire augmentation side of the tree honestly might need a rework sooner rather than later, even though it is something fairly new to the game. That's kind of really all my thoughts on it for now. Um, this is obviously pretty unscripted and kind of rambly, so there may be things I've missed. But I think it's an interesting problem uh, that the game has had, and I am curious on how they fix it. I do hope it's fixed sooner rather than later, for obvious reasons. Um, but uh, I don't really know how pressing those issues to fix are as well right but we'll see we'll see we'll see uh thank you for listening to me talk about bullshit as i like to talk about wow i hope you have a good night bye bye i have to awkwardly go over here and hit the stop record